Welcome to the Mental Wellness Wake Up Show, a podcast where growth-minded, creative people come to learn tips and tools from both spirituality and psychology that create lasting well-being. I am your host, mental wellness expert, Dawn McMillan. Let's get to it, beautiful people. This is one of those episodes where I am flying without notes. Fly with me. Let's have a little faith and a little trust that it's all going to be all right. The topic of today is courage. The topic of today is courage. Why? I've become increasingly convinced that that is actually the answer to mental wellness. Courage. Yeah, courage. Courage. And let me tell you a little bit about why I think that. But before I do... Let me thank you for being here. Time and attention are your most precious and non-renewable resources. Your willingness to share any of that with me is a gift and a grace I do not take for granted. So thank you for being here. Okay. Why courage? Why courage? Why courage? I believe that we have become a culture that coddles itself. And I'm so hesitant to talk about things like this because I have certain beliefs about human nature and I have certain political beliefs. And I worry that speaking in these terms about people being too coddled is aiding and abetting a set of points of view which are anathema to me. And I can't not speak the truth as closely as I can approximate it with my current knowledge because that's a disservice to you and to me. So one of my clients actually um, gave me this language and, and, I, and I thank her for it. Uh, she said that she'd been coddling herself. And this was in the context of, of doing things that, that provoked anxiety for her. She's like, I've been coddling myself. I was like, oh, you're such a genius. We're coddling ourselves rather than learning to increase the container in which we hold our emotions so that we can hold more of them or hold harder ones. We shrink our world to make sure we don't bump up against anything we don't like. There is an analogy that um, Michael Singer uses in his book, you know, the famous one, go look it up. Michael Singer uses about this person who ends up with a, a giant thorn in her arm and because that thorn is so painful she doesn't want to go through the effort of removing it so rather than removing the thorn in her arm she begins to create a life to protect the thorn in her arm I mean sure she can't do as much as she used to be able to do and sure you know she has to create a whole sling to protect her arm when she's playing the sports that she loves and it's not quite as good as it used to be And at least she doesn't have to face the pain of removing the thorn from her arm. And yeah, she has to sleep in some sort of weird way in order to avoid triggering and touching that thorn in her arm. But at least she doesn't have to face the pain of taking the thorn out of her arm. It's not a subtle analogy. We do that to ourselves. We do that to ourselves. Rather than facing the thing or things, the beliefs, the narratives, the realities, the the fill-in-the-blank noun of what has challenged us in the past or what might challenge us in the future, we coddle ourselves, we shrink our lives, we avoid. We avoid the things that make us uncomfortable. Experiential avoidance is the root of suffering. We go through so many efforts to avoid having an uncomfortable feeling that we begin to prevent ourselves from living a full, rich, and, um, what's the word, (laughs) Uh, technicolor, technicolor life. And the way to change that, the antidote to that is courage. The antidote to that is courage. I can't give the attribution, and I will in the show notes if I remember, but we... uh, We coddle ourselves because our truest value is not joy or happiness or success. Our truest value is comfort. 
our truest value is comfort. And I, and I mean this in the sense of, like, culturally speaking. There are some places and times where we're willing to be uncomfortable. You know, athletes that I know often do crazy things, right? They hurt themselves and they keep going because they love it. They're willing to be physically uncomfortable. But for the vast majority of us, we're willing, we're unwilling to be spiritually, physic, um, emotionally, or psychically uncomfortable. And so, like the analogy, the metaphor of the woman with a thorn in our arm, we would rather completely uproot our lives and make it as small as possible rather than face the discomfort of either removing the thorn from our arm or accepting that sometimes things hurt. Courage invites us to take action in the face of pain. It encourages us. <laughs> I didn't even realize that I was saying courage and encourage. It's funny. Courage lets us do those things that are high value to ourselves and the world around us and know that the discomfort is not fatal. Heartbreak isn't fatal. Does it suck? Yes. Do we want it? No. Can we survive it? Yes. You and I, beloved human friend, have a 100% success rate in surviving everything that has ever happened to us. That is cause for celebration. Courage says, I'm willing to take action in alignment with my values, with my goals, with my dreams, knowing full well that sometimes it's going to hurt. Sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable. If we drill down into our anxiety and our depression, ultimately what we end up being afraid of is a feeling. So when I take people to the worst case scenario, uh, what's the worst that could happen if that happens? What's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? It usually ends up somewhere of being um, homeless and or alone. And you're like, and then what's the worst that happen? Well, I won't like how that feels. I won't like how that feels. Courage says, I am willing to risk doing things that I might not like how it feels. Courage says, I am no longer going to coddle myself in order to avoid being uncomfortable because there are more important and greater things than my comfort, my happiness, for example. Wait, am I saying that you can be happy and uncomfortable? I am. I came across this great uh, quote. Pretty sure, yes. Uh, Epictetus, it's quite impossible to unite happiness with a yearning for what we don't have. It's impossible to unite happiness with a yearning with what we don't have. When we are uncomfortable, it's usually because we are resisting the present moment where we were yearning for something that we don't have. So for example, um, if I'm uncomfortable right now, emotionally, I'm not talking about physical discomfort, like I'm a little cold, I could go put on a sweater. But if I'm uncomfortable, it's usually because there's a part of me that is observing the present moment and going, I don't like this, I don't want this. I don't like this, I don't want this, I want something else. I don't like this, I don't want this, I want something else. Happiness, in a sense, is not even necessarily wanting what's happening. It's allowing what is happening. It's embracing what is. It's embracing what is. So to use my physical example, I'm a little bit cold. I can resist that and be, and be yearning for something I don't currently have, which is warmth. Or I can acknowledge that being a little bit cold isn't my preference. And so what? And I can have the courage to continue to record this podcast with you, even though I'm moderately, vaguely uncomfortable and there's a part of me, there's a part of me that wishes things were a little bit different. So courage is the foundational piece that allows us to create joy and happiness because it takes courage to be willing to face discomfort and the sister to courage is faith. 
We have a 100% survival record for everything that's ever happened to us. Have faith that you, we will survive whatever else happens to us. And if we don't, no problem. Either you'll survive it, in which case, woohoo, no problem. Or you won't, in which case, no problem. So what about trauma? What about trauma? Courage helps here too. It's the courage to release our entrapment in the narrative of the past. I was listening to a psychologist whose name I can't remember because, like I said, I'm flying with no notes today, who said that many of us will make a monument in our bodies to the trauma of our past because otherwise, how will people know how bad it was? If I don't continue to suffer in the present for what happened to me in the past, people aren't going to know what I've been through. People aren't going to have sympathy for my struggles. People aren't going to lower their expectations because otherwise they, they won't know that the thing happened was really terrible. In order to prove that the thing that happened to me was terrible, I need to keep it in the present moment. Because if I get over it, then how bad could it really have been? No, this is not logical. No, this is not something that we're doing on purpose. Yes, it is something that often happens. And so courage comes in in saying, I am willing to have peace in the present and joy in the future by rewriting my relationship to my past. And it could be the case that no one will ever know just how bad it was. And that is not abdicating, um, absolving, that's the word. That is not absolving the perpetrators in your life of their responsibility for what they did to you. That is not approving of what happened to you. It's none of that. It is having the courage to say, even though it was as bad as it was, I can choose something different for myself and in the future. So it takes a certain amount of, certain amount of courage to rewrite our relationship to the past. And it takes courage to go through the mourning period of letting go of that identity. There is mourning for the person that you were that went through that, and there's sadness, and there's grief, and there's transformation. Sweetheart, beautiful, beloved person, you have a 100% success rate of surviving that thing. You can survive getting over that thing. Courage to surrender our relationship. Wow, I'm a mush mouth today. Surrender our relationship to the stories about our past. Courage to live in that goo of transformation between the caterpillar that we were and the butterfly that we're becoming. I think it was Satchel Page that says, uh, when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, keep walking. For many of us, the familiarity of the past, as terrible as it is, the familiarity of the former identity is so much more appealing than staying in the darkness of the middle passage and the unknown on the other side. That's why I'm saying sometimes it takes courage. Courage to believe that the darkness is not forever and courage to believe that whatever is on the other side can be handled. And 99.9% .9 of the time, in my experience, both as a human being myself, as a parent, as a psychological professional, what's on the other side is so much better than what's in the past if you choose to create it that way. And even if it's not, you're going to survive that and create something beautiful out of that too. So I'm saying this like it's easy. I acknowledge this is not easy. What I'm inviting us to is to trust our survivorship 
and have the courage to be willing to survive uncertainty and the courage to have faith and hope that there is a future that is either A, better than the past that we are unwilling to let go of or unable to let go of yet, or is as equally survivable as everything else. And fine print here, it's not your fault. Your brain prefers the past. Your brain, God bless its little heart, is like, well, I, I know I can survive this other thing. I don't know what that is. I'm not going over there. And so it requires the courage and courage, courage, cur, French heart. It requires leaning into that heart space that says, I hear you, brain. I know it's scary. We're going to keep going. Thanks. Yeah. And why I want you to lean into your heart, your real heart, your real heart, not your cravings that you're passing off as your heart that's really your brain psyching you out. Your brain's wily. The brain is wily. It's like, oh, this is my intuition. Nah, brain. <laughs> that's just you and your cravings. <laughs> I trust that my heart wants this. Nah, brain. That's just you and your cravings, your real heart. Your real heart, which is an energy system, which has its own wisdom, your real heart speaks with gentleness. Even when your real heart um, has a, I don't want to say a strong opinion because that's brain language, even when your heart has like a conviction, it has it in a way that is still and certain and sturdy, or it'll whisper at you like, hey honey, hi, depending on its mood, right? So the voice of your heart is, hi, hi, yeah, or Oh, yes, absolutely. So listen to your real heart. That's where the courage comes from. Have patience with your sweet little brain. It really loves you, and it's really trying its best. It's just wired for you're the survival of your body, not the joy of your spirit. So it's doing its job, it's just trying to keep your body alive. Everything else is up to you. So lean into your heart. Thank your brain. Have patience for your brain. And let the heart give you the courage to know that you will survive everything that life is going to throw at you. And it's worth it to keep moving forward because the chances are that what's in front of you is better than what's behind you is so high. And you deserve a life of such joy and peace, and prosperity, and wholeness, and love, and cherishing, and all of the words fill in the blank the things that you most desire, because you are whole, you are perfect, you are complete, you are a freaking gift to this planet. So lean into your heart, your cœur, and keep it moving, my beautiful human. Until next time.